Hello and welcome to the Northwest Fusion Group video channel. I'm Ian G0 VGS. Something a little different today. Uh, it's nothing to do with Fusion for a start. Um, although we're Northwest Fusion Group and that's our favoured mode, uh, we have nothing against uh, other modes. And we're always interested in technology. And for me personally, uh, I've been looking at this radio for a little while and thought it would be interesting to do an unboxing uh, for anybody considering the same radio. It's an Anytone radio and it's the latest version of the AT578. It does DMR and FM and it looks a really interesting radio. So let's get on with the video. So here it is, this is the Anytone AT D578UV Plus uh, radio. Nice and uh, short and sharp and sweet. Uh, the UV stands for UHF VHF uh, and the plus is the latest version. There are two uh, models of this uh, radio, uh, including the one that it says on the side here, um, which is the UV3 plus. Um, if, you, if you look on the UK um, retailers, um, they all have all seem to have different ideas of what to call this radio. The uh, UV3 Plus, uh, to my mind, is the American version, which also has um, the 220 meg band. Um, this doesn't, it just has uh, the standard two meters and 70 centimeters. But this newer version um, also has uh, airband AM receive, and um, it has an increased number of contacts um, in there. The older version had 200,000. The box on this says 300,000. I believe it's more than that now, but uh, but there we are. Um, I've been meaning to look at this radio for a while. It's a really interesting radio. It does DMR and FM um, and uh, really comes with all sorts of things. You, you can see here uh, some of the information. Uh, that's That bit's in French by the looks of it. Well, there you go. It says 300,000 digital contacts here. Um, I believe that's more than that, but uh, there we are. And this is supposedly what's in the box. Um, and we'll, we'll see. There's no mention on here about the Bluetooth button, which I believe is in the box. We shall see uh, once I open that up. And statement of conformity on the back. So let's open the box and see what we've got. Right away on the top, as you would expect, is the operating manual, not overly thick. Um, I haven't had a chance to, to read this properly yet. I've had a look at the one on the web and, um, and it looks okay. Uh, the English looks very good in it, uh, which is nice. And there we are, that's got the same information uh, that the box has uh, about what is actually in the box. So I think we'll see just what is in the box. Well, a couple of Anytone stickers for a start. Let's have a look at the sides before we look at the actual radio. So in here, the first thing I can see is the Bluetooth button. Um, this seems to be, it, it seems to come from the commercial space. If you get a Yesu uh, Bluetooth, uh, re Bluetooth enabled radio, um, then uh, if you use a Bluetooth headset, the um, call button on the side of the headset usually acts as a PTT. Um, that's all right, uh, but uh, I can understand why they do it this way. This this button uh, connects to the radio um, separately to whatever you have, and that's great if you're in a car. Because um, if you're in a car, then you can, uh, with the Velcro strap that comes with it, you can put that on your steering wheel or on your gear stick. Um, and you can pair the radio with uh, with your car. So your microphone and speakers are the car microphone and speakers, and you obviously have control of, over that, uh, usually from the steering wheel, volume-wise. Um, and then you would have this button, which would operate the PTT, which otherwise you wouldn't be able to do in something like a car. So really good idea, and it comes free uh, with the radio, which is absolutely fantastic. So we'll put that aside. Um, we've got uh, the power lead and that looks like a standard Kenwood 
uh, style of connector uh, and at the other end you can see they're just bare wires I'll be putting Anderson power poles on this uh, nice to see both uh, positive and negative fused uh, in here as well we've got what looks like yeah a USB lead to uh, micro USB that'll be for programming the radio Uh, microphone clip another um, USB lead to micro um, so uh, both of these one of them will be to charge the Bluetooth button the other one for a programming lead possibly a bit overkill including two in the box but there we are and the usual hardware and in the other side We have the microphone. Now this looks a bit of a beast. I'll work out which end it comes out. So there's the microphone. Very chunky in the hand. Also includes a speaker. Um, that's going to be interesting um, the top there looks like there's a pair of LEDs one for VFOA one for VFOB so you can quickly see which one you're on even if you can't actually see the radio and looks to be duplicated down here as well I'm not quite sure uh, what that is but uh, certainly lots of lots of uh, different buttons on here um, and some presets as well uh, which is brilliant and also in here is the GPS aerial um, the radio does not have an internal GPS aerial but that's fine this is probably a better idea it's stick on um, especially in a vehicle you can put that up on your windscreen or whatever uh, standard SMA connector on the end uh, and that should give you good solid GPS lock the uh, the bracket standard mobile bracket um, it looks quite tall um, as if the radio will stand quite tall on it with quite a gap which is good especially if you you're hanging it um, because then you've got room above uh, for the heatsink uh, to dissipate and for the speaker uh, speaking of which we'll have a look at now if I can stop destroying the box so here's the radio it's really quite heavy um, big heatsink on the top and a fan on the back um, good sized speaker and on the front there you can see you've got six programmable buttons um, and they're dual press so you've actually got 12 functions there plus menu and exit power button independent volume buttons one for VFOA one for VFOB um, channel switch and that's really very clicky um, and you can press that for functions as well the microphone socket uh, you can tell the difference with the new radio because it has this bezel around the screen uh, which the older one doesn't have so this is the the newer version of the radio and on the back here uh, is the uh, SO239 uh, for your aerial and there's the SMA connector for the GPS I don't know whether you can fully see that uh, but there is a, a flap here uh, where you have uh, two um, different uh, sockets for um, the uh, external speaker um, so that's it that's uh, that's the radio I'm really looking forward to having a play with this and uh, I will come back at another time with more information about the radio because it does seem a very popular radio especially in the States um, a lot of people buying this there's a lot of mods uh, a lot of hints and tips uh, and YouTube videos on how to program it etc um, you can download the um, customer 
uh, programming software, the CPS for this, uh, from uh, various sites, obviously from the Anytone site, uh, but also from um, Bridgecom uh, across in the States. Um, and uh, there are sites where you can get hold of code plugs, etc. Um, so everything is available. Um, you're not having to pay for anything extra at all. Um, the radio allegedly, um, I obviously haven't had a chance to test this yet, has four power levels. Um, they vary slightly between UHF and, um, and VHF. Um, but uh, the VHF um, low power is one watt, uh, as is the UHF. And that's really useful if you're going to be using this as I am uh, with a hotspot. Um, it comes as standard uh, with the normal uh, 144 to 146 and 430 um, to 440 megahertz um, for two meters and 70 centimeters. But um, it, uh, it can be opened to, to various things uh, by programming the actual radio. So you don't have to take the lid off to, uh, to do anything with it. I'm really looking forward to playing with it. It looks very configurable and uh, as I say I will report back uh, once I've got it in use and I've, uh, I've done a bit of programming with it etc. So there you are the Anytone AT-D578UV. So there we are the AT578 Pro unboxed. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. If there's enough interest I may well do a follow-up video um, telling you about some of my experiences with the radio and what I think about it. Uh, please leave a comment below if you'd like to see that. And until the next time, thanks for watching. Cheerio. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please click the like button and do consider subscribing to the channel. If you click the bell icon, YouTube will notify you every time I release a new video.